Welcome to Accelerate My Practice. So glad you could join me here today. Today I want to talk about, or we've been on a series talking about leveraged activities. You know, what are the big things that you can do that'll generate a huge, huge result in your business, in your practice? And in this case, I want to extend it to your personal life as well. And what I want to discuss here is state management. And what I mean by that is your emotional state. How can you manage your emotional state and how much will that impact those around you, whether it's at home and it's your family, whether it's at the office and you're the doctor or whether you're you know, the assistant, the front desk, the hygienist, and how much can you impact those around you? you know, the, the moral of the story is, is that we all have bad days, right? What's interesting is to see how we respond to those challenges. And, and we, there's a variety of ways that we can respond to these things. We obviously can blow up, destroy mailboxes and, and ice cream trucks, or, or we can you know, check ourselves at the door, so to speak, and have a completely different impact. And the reason why I think this is, needs to be in the series of the, the leveraged activities is because this is probably the one thing that can dramatically change your business the most. If you can't control your emotional state, and obviously I, I realize the majority of people that are watching this aren't like destroying mailboxes and, and you know taking explorers and throwing them across the wall like they're you know darts or something like that. But even if, if we're just you know crabby inside, how much does that impact all of those around us? And the, the moral of the story is that if we can't control our state, how can we influence somebody else's? You know, anytime there's an interaction between two people, yourself and myself, we sit down and let's assume just for the sake of argument, I'm the one who's having the bad day and I'm crabby. I'm either going to bring you down or you're going to bring me up. There's, there's no equilibrium, right? I mean, unless we just walk away and go, whatever, I don't care about that. We're going to influence each other in some way, shape or form. So the challenge becomes as we're sitting there interacting with each other, one person's got great energy and emotional, has a great emotional state and the other one is, is not so much so. We're going to influence each other in, in some capacity. So if you're in the dental office and let's assume you're a front desk person as an example and, and you're answering the phone and you had a bad day, had a fight with your spouse or, or whatever the case might be and you come in and you're not feeling so awesome and you're answering the phone with less than enthusiasm, you're answering the phone maybe even crabby or maybe just you know monotone and dead but you know you're not being mean. You know I, I can see where we justify that and say hey but I'm not being mean that's true. So you're right. You're not doing like massive amounts of damage, but you're also still doing damage because the person on the other end doesn't feel special, doesn't feel welcome, doesn't feel warm, doesn't feel invited, doesn't feel ingratiated. And so what we're trying to induce whenever we're talking to people is reciprocity, right? So if I'm really, really nice to you, guess what happens? You're really nice to me. I can't tell you how valuable this could be financially to a business. I mean, imagine for a moment, and we've all worked in one of those practices, because any of you have been in my kickoff, you've heard me say, hey, how many of you have ever worked for a crabby doctor? And almost every hand always goes up, even some of the doctors, of course. And, and then, of course, the question becomes, tell me what the, the employees in that practice were like. And almost always I hear crabby. Tell me what the patients in that practice were like. And almost always I hear crabby. Birds of a feather flock together. And, and what's fascinating to me as I watch that is what does that cost a practice? So if everybody is crabby and nobody's having a good time, the patients aren't either, what happens to your acceptance rate? You know, let's assume if the national average is 50% acceptance rate, but we happen to be in one of those crabby practices and be one of those crabby people. And so as a result, the energy just stinks. And so we're presenting dentistry to the patients and we're like, you know, take it or leave it. You know, kind of this, um, you know, nasty attitude. I didn't want to say New York attitude because we have some people from New York watching this. They'd be offended. So footnote. And so all of a sudden we, we kind of have this nasty attitude. And imagine now that our case acceptance rate drops to 35%, 40% maybe. You know, it's not as bad. It's only 40% because, you know, I wasn't being mean, but I wasn't being friendly. But a 10% decrease in case acceptance, if you're a million dollar practice, that's a hundred thousand dollar hit. That's a huge, huge hit. And, and if you understand the economics of the practice at all, the profit, that 100,000 at the end, that's the profit of the business. A huge piece of it. If it's the average practice, that could be 30% of the profit of the business. 
And so now all of a sudden you take a, a 30% hit in the profit of the business and now you're looking at it going, hey, where's my end of year bonus, doctor? You know, because you're, you're, you're being nice, you know, nice. And, and you're going, where's my bonus? And doctor's going, you know, I, I don't have it. I, I don't have the excess profit because, and of course, if you don't understand the economics of it, you don't realize that the hit it takes. And similarly, you know, I've seen circumstances where I've got doctors who are the person who's negatively impacting people. The team's amazing, they're high energy. And the doctor comes in and is a buzzkill to the morning huddle. And now all of a sudden the energy goes from really, really high because everyone in the office was excited to, you know, just sucks the life right out of it. You know, jujitsu is an interesting martial art. What you do is you take the energy of your, your opponent and you focus it to your advantage. So if the person comes in trying to tackle you, you merely step out of the way and use their energy to throw them through a glass plate wall and, and have them get hurt as a result of their own energy, negative energy. And, and so what it allows you to do is to stay out of the fight, so to speak, and not push. Because if I walk up to somebody and I push on their hand, guess what they do? They push back. I don't even have to tell them to. It happens naturally. So don't push back. Instead, dance with them. Dance with them. And, and I think if you do that, you'll change their state and it, it'll blow your mind how radically it'll change that other person. And then if you take 30 seconds afterwards and reveling your success, success begets success. And I think what you find then is something called momentum. And the, on the other side of momentum is called transformation. On the other side of transformation is living a life of your dream. And I think if you merely start with this one itty bitty little seemingly inconsequential thing, what it leads to is transformation. An entirely different life and one where you're living out your dreams every single day. I can't wait to hear uh, to see you next week this time. It'll be 8 o'clock Mountain, 10 o'clock on the East Coast. Until then, have a wonderful day. What if you could have the practice of your dreams? What's holding you back? Imagine a life where you have everything you ever wanted.